And we are live, guys, for the last session of the Craft Cannabis Summit. It's been an incredible two days. This is the ninth uh, session we've had over the last two days. We've had stuff on psychedelics, on growing at scale, on medicinal. We've had over 50 speakers from all around the world. So it's been a fantastic few days. I want to thank everybody uh, who's been involved, everyone in the back of the scenes who's been supporting us. Um, tonight, we're going to discuss music and cannabis. And uh, we're going to talk about the creative process and cannabis and where it fits into the music industry. I want to thank uh, Druid's Garden and Grow in Africa, who are our headline sponsors. Uh, and this session is brought to you by Craft Cannabis TV. So without further ado, I'm going to introduce our panelists. So I'll let them introduce themselves, actually. Uh, AK is supposed to be joining us. We are unable to get a hold of them at the moment. So we'll keep, uh, keep tabs on that and let you know as soon as we hear anything. But guys, I'm going to hand it over to you, Valentino. Welcome. Do you want to introduce yourself and... Tell us who you are and, uh, and uh, yeah, just give us some insight into, into who you are. Yeah. I think you might be on mute there, Val. No, I'm struggling to hear you. Val, let, let, let's go to Dave quickly while you, while you have a fiddle around there. Can you hear me? I can hear you loud and clear, Dave, yeah. Like a... How's it, everyone? My name's Dave, uh, otherwise known uh, infamously as the Kifnis. Uh, you might have seen my videos online. I, I do a lot of satire, I do a lot of music. I'm an electronic music producer and very occasional weed smoker. <laughs> good. good and, brown, and, and, and space brownie eater. Ah, space brownie. Edibles. Okay. Good to know. Yeah, Dad, you want to start? Yeah. Greetings, greetings. Uh, my name is Leander Balantulo, and uh, I'm a curator and curator of uh, experiences. 99.9% um, uh, of the time, these experiences include music, um, uh, and uh, they also usually also includes marijuana, um, uh, whether, it, whether it be curated or accidental. Or, or, or lifestyle, or all of the above. Um, and uh, I'm a part of an entertainment group that uh, has three of the top venues in, in Cape Town. Um, um, and I've been in the entertainment and hospitality industry and branding and marketing for about uh, 15 to 20 years. And uh, it's a pleasure to be here. Thank you. And I've worked with, you know, pretty much every artist, I think, in South Africa. I think we can safely say at some point. Um, I wouldn't say every artist, but, everyone, but plenty. A, a, a wide spectrum from, from, from Lyra to, uh, to who, to, um, I don't know, who's on the other side? It, it, it's, um, a, it's a long list. The Kefnus is on the other side of Lyra. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but you haven't uh, worked with me yet. <laughs> I, like, I like that thing. <laughs> I'm, a booker, I'm, a booker of, I'm a booker of talent. I'm a spotter of talent. I'm a, I'm a nurturer of talent. I'm a connector of talent. Um, uh, um, we, yeah, that's a bit about me for now. Great. Well, I know you've had a lot of, lot of dealings with live stuff, a lot of dealings with artists. So it's going to be great to get your insight into cannabis and music. Val, um, let's check if we can hear you now. Are you there? Uh, you might, might be on mute. You just check your mic. No. What, what, what I can suggest, Val, is you might want to try and log back in. It was working fine earlier, um, but uh, we'll, we'll leave it there. We'll come back to you. So if you could just have, have a work on that and maybe log back in. Um, so listen, let's, let's, let's get into the conversation. So cannabis and music, you know, for those of you who don't know me, I've been in the music industry pretty much my whole life since I was in high school. So I'm very familiar with both spaces. Um, cannabis has always been something that I was exposed to in the music industry um, and has always been kind of hand in glove in terms of uh, uh, the, the creative process. But um, I want to start with you, Dave. Um, do you, do you, what, what is your perception or, or what is your experience of cannabis in the creative space? So when you're creating music, um, do, you, do you consume cannabis? Do, you, do other artists that you know consume cannabis? When do when does when do cannabis and music mix in your experience? Well, uh, I guess it started when I was at Rhodes. I, I was playing trumpet 
and uh, DJing and yeah, I was in a bunch of bands, but the one band I was in was a ska band uh, called 10 Points for the Dismount. And, and we had a botanist in our band and he like, he made the most potent weed. Uh, I, I didn't know much about weed, but this was like my introduction to it. And um, I, I almost felt like an outsider in the group. I was quite a goody two shoes back then when I was a student. Um, you know, I was, I was kind of on the straight and narrow. I, I was a church goer, uh, still am to some degree, but uh, there was a conflict of interest there. So I kind of stayed out of that. And then sort of coming to Cape Town again, I was in bands where guys were like smoking weed a lot. And I kind of got into it a little bit more then, but uh, I, I felt like it was almost overtaking me a bit. Like, I think I've got quite an addictive personality and I'm very aware of it. And like, I didn't want to get hooked on this stuff because I just knew like, you know, this, this was kind of uh, having an, an addictive effect on me. And then when I left that band and started doing my own thing, I, I almost stayed away from weed completely. Um, and yeah, I, I think, uh, yeah, the, the times that I have smoked weed, it hasn't helped me in any way to be creative. I think, uh, it's, it's something that almost inhibits my creativity. Uh, music actually sounds amazing when I'm, you know, when, when I've had a bit of weed, but in terms of creating, I think I almost need to be completely sober. I know it's very different for, for different people. Um, but yeah, my brain kind of just goes to mush. <laughs> so yeah, I, I enjoy it, but, uh, yeah, it, it definitely hasn't helped my creativity by any means. Okay. That's an interesting perspective. Um, Val, are you there? See if you're working. Yeah, we still, we're still struggling to hear you. Okay, now we're still struggling with your headphones. Yeah, I know. Um, if you've just joined us, uh, we, we, we have not been able to get hold of AK this evening, so our apologies. Um, we're hoping he joins us at some point, but unfortunately we weren't able to reach him. He was confirmed. Um, so, uh, yeah, so thanks for, thanks for joining us. This is the last Craft Canvas Summit session of the evening. Um, so, uh, Leander, let's, you, you have a, you come at it from a very different perspective in the sense that, um, obviously I, I know that, uh, you know, you, you are a, a cannabis connoisseur yourself. Um, but as a, as a promoter, uh, how do you feel about artists that use cannabis? And the one thing I want to touch on is, uh, is have you been, spent much time in studio with artists and do you, from your perspective, do you think it enhances the creative process? Uh, you'll need to unmute. My bad. There um, we go. Yeah, thanks, Dave, and thanks, Trent. And uh, very interesting question. You know, my, my one of my first experiences with with with, with ganja um, uh, was 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 it obviously in, in the Caribbean where I grew up, Trinidad and Tobago. I was probably seventeen or uh, sixteen, seventeen. And beyond obviously seeing the guys on the, on the block smoking, etc. You know, what I mean, when I had like in, when I had a lot more intimate contact with it was in studio um, uh, with uh, with artists uh, at, a, at a at a very modern studio at the time. Um, that was probably in the early nineties, and it was an international artist. A friend of mine was was in, was was a rapper, and uh, he managed to 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 get us into the studio session. And I, did, I wasn't a smoker yet, but the level of energy that I experienced in that session, whether it was a combination, whether it was artist, artist energy alone, or whether it was a combination of artist with, with, um, with marijuana and, and rum or whatever it was, um, it, it's for me, for me, marijuana and, and, and music and, 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 that, and that process, um, if, if 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 the two don't don't exist, it's a, it's an it's an oddity. <laughs> um, well, uh, especially, I guess, especially in that region where it's synonymous with the music that comes out of that region. Despite it, in that era, being very taboo, 
um, uh, whether in the 80s, 90s, um, uh, where marijuana culture, yes, the marijuana usage was, 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 uh, was, was, was everywhere, but it was still a very taboo thing. Um, uh, and people, I mean, like a lot of people smoked undercover, or which it's, it's gone a bit more, but but though it's accepted now, the last 15 years. Either way, I fuse the music creation, music creation process with with uh, with marijuana. Um, uh, whether you know, what I mean, that's that's just, that's just from from my perspective, and and the genres within within which I I I, I kind of play with whether it's uh, it's jazz or funk or soul or hip hop or you know what I mean I wouldn't include classical there because you know what I mean I, I don't think there's enough evidence to show which of these guys and what substances they were on from fucking Rachmaninoff to Beethoven you know what I mean everyone had their had their their thing but uh, but for me you know what I mean it, it boils down to the artist and, and 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 whether and whether your your inspiration or your plug or your your vibe comes is enhanced by by you you scratching yours by you <laughs> pinching your nipple or or by enjoying a blunt bottom line is that you create it um uh, for me um and I connect closely with marijuana and I connect closely with with, with music from marijuana smokers across the right. Thanks for that. Uh, Val, let's just check if we've got you. I know, I know that Val is a, is a whiz with Zoom calls and all kinds of stuff. So this is, a, this is, this is very unusual for him not to be, uh, not to be on. Yeah. And when we, when, we, when we checked before, he was fine. The only other thing I can suggest, Val, is maybe you reboot your machine. That might, uh, that might help with something. All right, good luck. Um, let's talk about genres, different genres of music, because if we look at uh, 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 reggae, obviously that's, a, that's a, reggae and, and cannabis are cousins, brothers and sisters, they're totally attached. Um, then you get the sort of electronic music industry, which is traditionally more chemically driven um, through whether it's you know MDMA or other kind of um, uh, drugs. Um, what do you? What's your guys' perspective on on genre apart from reggae? Because that's that's obvious. Uh, genre and cannabis, uh, Dave. What, what what's your perspective on that? Um, well, I, I'm I'm going to speak from a recent experience where I I had a, a brownie for the first time, um, and as is the case with many first time brownie eaters. They, they don't realize how strong it is. You, you eat it and you go, flip, the stuff's not working. And then you eat <laughs> another one. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, yeah, an hour later, I was in a bit of a state. And like, I was, I was trying to listen to music just to kind of like calm me down. But like, none of it seemed to really <laughs> connect with me and, and, until I started listening to bebop jazz like super fast jazz and like for the first time i mean i'm i'm a jazz musician so i appreciate you know all styles of jazz but this was i think for the first time i i really appreciated bebop <laughs> it almost felt like a regular tempo I, I don't know why or how but it's uh yeah in that state uh, bebop just really made sense to me that's interesting. I had a similar experience, um, but with actually with with death metal, where you know, which is it's not a genre that I've really ever been into. And um, I sat down many many years ago with a little bass player to play with me, and uh, he he basically put this death metal on after smoking a very strong uh, uh, joint. And 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 even though the music doesn't necessarily resonate with me, I got it. I, I just I heard it in a very different way, and I understood why people are into very heavy, hard music like that. So I think it's a different experience for everybody. And it's interesting you mentioned the edibles because um, I think edibles are incredible uh, as, a, as, a, as a medium to take cannabis, um, but it is all about the dosing. And, and we talk about this often as, as uh, Chiba, um, that, uh, that the dosing is a big issue. You know, you, I, I was in Johannesburg a few months ago and we went into somewhere and somebody gave us a brownie and they said, oh, there's 100 milligrams in there. And if I was to have eaten that, I would have, you know, I would have, I would have had a, probably, probably an anxiety attack. I mean, you can't die from a cannabis overdose. So for those of you who don't know that, you cannot die from a THC overdose. But you can certainly have a pretty crap time 
and feel pretty rough and ropey. Um, so yeah, edibles are, are great, but they, they need to be managed and, uh, and uh, the experience can change. But, but it, it sounds like there was a, a bit of a flip at the end where you actually had a positive experience, even though it started off as a negative experience. Yeah, it, it felt like I was going down a very dark rabbit hole, but then the bebop <laughs> sort of saved, it saved me. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, but, um, yeah. Just, just, just going back to genre, um, do, do, you think, do you think cannabis is kind of genre specific? Because cannabis and culture are very intertwined. Uh, do you think cannabis attra attaches itself to certain music culture? Um. Not necessarily. I mean, the, the, the obvious link would be, you know, reggae. Um, but, yeah, I, I think uh, no matter what kind of music you're listening to, it, it's going to sound different, uh, whether you're having an edible or a drag or whatever it is. Like, it's going to change your perception of it. Whether that's good or bad, I'm not sure. But uh, every time I've kind of smoked weed like music just uh it, it it evokes different parts of you that are maybe dormant or or, or are maybe just heightened in the experience and um yeah it's it's interesting to me cool yeah no, what's your what's your perspective on on sort of genre and and cannabis you know i think i think the acceptance and growth of, of marijuana consumption globally. Um, uh, you know I mean, it's been, exp it's, it's exponential, you know what I mean? It's, it's compared to, to, to 15, 20 years ago. And where marijuana consumption is such a part of, of popular culture, lifestyle, and consumption of life itself. Um, uh, where, where, you know what I mean? Where, in, regardless of genre, you see, you, 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 you know what I mean? Regardless of, of, of we're talking music to, 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 to work lifestyle. Um, uh, you know, it's marijuana is just so entrenched in, 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 in so many, so many more people now that uh, it's, 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 it's impact varies. Um, and, uh, and, and more people are having a closer relation, having their own relationship with marijuana. Um, and uh, whether it's in the, in the in the electronic music scene or in the hip hop scene, you know what I mean. Marijuana, I believe, you know what I mean, play, plays a, plays a, a critical role. Um, um, and uh, you were talking about uh, about substances and, and, and various genres. You know what I mean. Just just look at BPM. Um, you know, obviously on the on the on the on the dance side of things, the BPM is fucking up there. Whether you're creating it or or, 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 or listening as a consumer. Um, you know, what I mean, you want you you usually want something to take you up there. Hence, your substance would be different, um, uh, and uh, you know the impact of of reggae music globally, um, and, and obviously the impact of 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 of, of, of Afro beats and, uh, and 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 the West African sound and and that kind of and that connection and the Pan African thing and. And, and and dance hall, you know what I mean? It's 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 all it's 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 my you know, marijuana is an integral part of of of, of popular culture, um, yeah. uh, which is a black culture right now globally, um, uh, and uh, and marijuana is is, is 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 entrenched with that. You know what I mean? People as in like the, the markets and, and the consumers are awake to the fact that this substance was banned for bullshit reasons. And there's no reason why we should be free to choose to consume it or not. Um, uh, so it's so it starts with acceptance and and and, and relationship with your with, with with your substance, whether it's alcohol or marijuana. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah absolutely. Uh, Val, let's uh, let's see if we can hear your the sweet sounds of your voice. Are you, can you hear us, Val? No, we seem to be struggling there. So, uh, interesting story in terms of genres. I remember going to um, a trance event, not also not really the style of music I was into, but I woke up at half five in the morning. I went to this trance event, uh, got there onto the dance floor at like you know five thirty six in the morning, and I remember walking up uh, into the vineyards in Cape Town, and uh, my guitarist at the time was a big uh, cannabis smoker, and we we stood uh, by this by this vineyard, and he pulled out a joint. And we smoked this joint together and he just looked over at me and he said, 
wow, this would be so amazing if they were playing reggae, you know, because they were pumping the strands in the background. And I thought there was such an apt statement about how, you know, different different kind of chemicals and different substances are, are do put you into a different state. You know, if you're going to go to a sort of a jump up event where you want to be dancing and throwing your hands in the air, cannabis might not be the right thing. I mean, it is, it is, it just depends on perspective, I guess. Um, I want to talk about um, the, 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 because it's interesting you say that, you know, internationally, cannabis is becoming more acceptable. People are talking about it more. But over the last few months, we've spoken to a number of artists who, who had asked if they would speak out about cannabis. And uh, it was incredible the amount of artists that actually uh, have spoken to me in the last few months who said that they wouldn't speak about cannabis um, because they still see it as taboo. They still see it as potentially um, affecting their market share or, or, or their audience. So we still do live in a very conservative space, um, not necessarily us as, as creatives in this space, but um, how do you think we change the perspective of the general populace so that, you know, when you stand on stage or you, you, you say something in your lyrics that is cannabis related, you don't lose half of your fan base? Dave, maybe you could answer that. Uh, well, anyone who knows me knows I'm not afraid to speak my mind and speak to people with, with uh, different opinions. But I'm... I'm probably on the more conservative side of things, but that doesn't mean that I'm not open to having a conversation, even though I'm not like a, a regular marijuana smoker. Like I'm interested to hear other people's points of view. And, uh, you know, if we can respect each other's dignity, it doesn't matter, in my opinion, whether you don't smoke or you do smoke. Like at the end of the day, we just got to hear each other out. And uh, there's always an opportunity to kind of just learn from each other. Um, and yeah, it's, it's a pity that you, that you say that. I mean, I think it is, it is just the case a lot of the time. Artists don't want to, you know, say certain things. They don't want to speak their mind in case they offend, you know, certain people in their fan base. I mean, there might be pe people listening or, or watching now seeing that, you know, I'm, I'm speaking at a weed thing and they they might unfollow me because they think oh no i never knew the kiffness was a a, a pothead and i don't like potheads so unfollow. like whatever <laughs> yeah, <you know>? yeah. <laughs> but uh you know it's it's it has happened to me a few times you know like i, I get invited on to to panels with you know weird and interesting people and then people just see me speaking to them and then they assume that you know you know, because I'm speaking to this person, I'm now aligned with that person in some way. And it's it's absolute nonsense. And I think uh, it's something I'm actively trying to do is, you know, just speak to as many different people as possible, no matter what their view or background is. I mean, even if someone's like a crazy right winger and they want to invite me onto their podcast i'll be like cool let's chat you know let's let's see if we can learn something from each other and um yeah i i think uh it does take a little bit of of guts and balls for an artist to you know be open to to different things um and i'm saying that from first-hand experience but i think uh the pros far away the cons if i'm honest um, and it would, it would be cool to just see more artists being, you know, honest and open and, mm -hmm. and sharing their views. Yeah, we're still we're still relatively conservative, I think, in South Africa. I mean, you know, artists internationally, especially in the States, everyone just wears everything on their sleeve, you know, so people are very overt, but it's also, it's a very different market. Um, there's, a, there's an interesting comment from uh, Tasneem here. I'm definitely more creative and can go for longer. I hope that means that music uh, at one task than usual, but I'm... When I'm high on marijuana, um, it's uh, except it, uh, the best thing is your acceptance towards everyone, and it's definitely appreciated. So there's a comment there about it being very, very open. You know, I think that's what it is. You know, cannabis ultimately is a connector. It's a, it's a, it's a plant that has been given to us on this, on this planet, and denied to us for many years. And, and the deeper uh, I get into the, the industry and learning about the, the benefits of cannabis, the more I realize that it's a travesty that. Uh, it hasn't been allowed, you know. Um, from a creative perspective, you know, so from my, from my perspective uh, as a creative and as an artist, I find cannabis very good to write. Um, so I find it it it's 
It's a, it, maybe it's an inefficient thing, maybe it's a flow thing. I find it really helps me just, just let loose. Um, but what I, what I find it very bad for is production. Uh, if I'm trying to produce stuff, I just can't, I can't operate and focus and function. Um, and it does affect my ears. So when I'm listening to music uh, of the cannabis uh, produced music, I hear it in a very different way. And I really enjoy that. When I often listen back to my own material that I'm working on um, uh, after cannabis, I don't find the experience uh, that positive. So um, I, I, try and, I try and balance those two out. Val, let's gonna, we're going to give you a try again. Uh, are, are you there? <laughs> I can see you there. Um, that's it. No, we just we're just really struggling. I'm so I'm so sorry that you're struggling with that. I think I think out of respect, let's let's call it a day from you. Thank you so much. Just so you know, Valentino um, uh, is the founder and, and heads up Bridges for Music, which is a non-profit. Um, him and I have been working together for many years. Um, we built a school together in Lina Township. Uh, and, and Valentino also has spent, uh, he's originally from Spain, has spent many, many years uh, working in Ibiza clubs. So he's going to get, you know, he's worked with anyone from Richie Horton to Skrillex to all the big electronic artists. So I was really hoping to get an opinion from him on, on that whole scene. So sadly, uh, the technical issues have failed us. Um, I don't know what's going on with his microphone, but uh, Val, thanks for joining us anyway. Really appreciate it. Uh, for those of you who have joined us a bit late, uh, sadly, we, we have not been able to get hold of AK, so we don't know what's happening there. So it's been a bit of a strange panel. So we have Dave from the Kiffness and Luanda, who are both uh, music experts. Dave is an artist. Luanda's worked with so many artists. Uh, the list is super long and uh, has experience, you know, from the, the, the West Indies and all kinds of things. So, um, so let, let's talk about uh, the live side. So um, as, an, as an artist, cannabis and live do not mix for me at all. Uh, the perspective is too weird. Um, my, my audio uh, it, it tweaks. Um, I think I've, I've probably been on stage once on cannabis and swore that I'd never do it again. Um, I, have, I, I do know guys that get on stage and won't get on stage without smoking a joint. I remember working when I was younger on a, a massive attack uh, gig and uh, Daddy O, the tall guy, uh, he'd been just smoking constantly before he went on stage. And he was about five minutes before he went on stage and he kind of stumbled up to me. And he just said, uh, uh, can I get some weed? And I just looked at him, I said, but dude, you just smoked like this massive joint. And he goes, yeah, but I want to get more high before I go on stage. And I remember just being like, some people can just handle it, you know. But I do think it changes perspective. So from a, from a promoter perspective, uh, Leander, what do you think? I mean, if an artist smokes a big joint before you go on stage, does it make you panic? Uh, how does it make you feel? I'm 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 usually I'm usually right next to the artist saying, "Hey, pass the blunt." <laughs> um, I'm 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 that guy, you know. Inevitably, once he goes out and he delivers according to 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 my expectation and and exceeds it and the, and he connects with the crowd and delivers an incredible experience and there's an exchange of value, you know what I mean? And and that and that uh, tradition of a joint before stage um, or whatever it is before stage um, uh, doesn't uh, fuck up the experience and the value exchange um, uh, or, 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 you know what I mean, just in holistically, then uh, feel free, brother. <laughs> you know what yeah. I mean? That's, that's what it is, whether, whether, it's, whether it's before a meeting or whether it's before you go to the gym um, or whether, or whether you, you, you sitting to, to, to cut a, to cut a, a marketing edit, which includes audio and visual, obviously. Um, uh, you know, it, 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 it boils down to your relationship with, 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 with the herb. Um, uh, and, um, no. and that's, and that's mature. Wow, we can hear you. Sorry to interrupt you. Can someone hear me? We can hear you. We can hear you. Welcome, Valentino. No. Hold one sec while, while Luanda finishes and then we're coming oh, straight yeah. to you. Thanks for your persistence and perseverance, man. Yes. So, 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 just to go back to to how, something you asked earlier on, Trenton, about how do we, how do we, how do we, how do we, as individuals, like uh, increase acceptance of marijuana? Um, because you know, what I mean, you're saying that that uh, a lot of artists are still afraid to put their voice to it because of stigma or losing fans, etc. 
Um, obviously, that, that's, that's, that's fairly understandable, dependent on the age demographic or, or age group or, you know what I mean, or your demographic of, that, that you speak to. But, you know, regardless of, 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 of all of that, you know, I, believe, I believe that how, how, we, how, we, how we increase acceptance is by being successful and by being authentic and by, and by not being afraid to, to live a lifestyle that includes marijuana. In in a, in an unapologetic but in an unarrogant in, a, in an unintrusive way, um, and 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 when when you know people I think I think because people pay failure and and uh, and you know what I mean and like ugh, with marijuana and daha and ganja and mess and 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 and, and just disorganization um, and laziness um, with, with 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 marijuana. Um, um, over and above, you know, what I mean, they, they do they do creativity or or, or personal choice. Um, uh, so so we so we need to, we need to as marijuana consumers um, uh, with voices, um, we, we 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 need to we need to be unapologetic and and be successful, so they can see that hey, this, this is so and so. Who, who is in finance or whatever. This is so-and-so who is successful as, as an artist. This is so-and-so who is successful as whatever you want to be. You know what I mean? But hey, I know buts. And hey, if you dig a bit deeper, he enjoys his herb. Ain't no thing. Yeah, yeah that's, how, that's how we, I don't want to say normalize it, but, but yeah, that, that, that trivializes the, the, the need. Yeah. Um, uh, but um, it's, it, it needs to be normalized. Yeah, great. Val, I, I did a kind of outro to you as you were uh, leaving there because I know you're coming back home. But please, I'd, I'd really like you to just introduce yourself, uh, which if you could, please. Hi. Sorry, guys. I'm late for the, for the party. <laughs> I was trying my best. <laughs> um, yeah, so my name is Valentino Barrios. I'm Spanish, as you might notice from my accent. And I've been living in South Africa for quite some years. Um, I'm currently running a nonprofit called Bridges for Music, uh, which uh, has a school, a creative school in the township of Langa that uh, was built with uh, Trenton uh, for many years. And I've been working in the music industry, mainly in the electronic dance music industry, uh, running some big clubs around the world, mainly in Spain, um, one called Amnesia in Ibiza, which probably some people know. Um, and yeah, I've been working with a lot of people that consume cannabis. I'm not a you know regular um, user of cannabis, uh, maybe more so CBD and and perhaps other substances, but not not cannabis. Uh, but I work with many, including you know also all the big artists uh, that you probably know come through Ibiza, but but also other ones like Snoop Dogg and you know other more traditional consumers of cannabis. I actually have a very funny story with, with Snoop Dogg. It, it took us like, he was two hours late to one of our concerts in Ibiza because he was getting stoned in the hotel. Um, you know, and we didn't know what was happening with him and we were calling the tour manager and he was supposed to be on stage live on MTV um, like at 2 p.m. in the evening. And you know, he was it was 4 p.m. and he wasn't there. The, the club was packed and everyone was going nuts and you know, complaining. and you know, and eventually had to go into the hotel room and there he was, you know, pl playing video games, absolutely stoned. So, you know, th and this is a true, true story. This is not a, you know, uh, a made up story. I mean, I can tell you, I can, I can guarantee you that it was, it was true. So, yeah, I mean, it's good or bad, I guess, it depends on, on the consumption, the usage, the space, the context, all of those things, right? We were, we were literally just talking before you came on about as a, as a promoter, when you have your promoter hat on, does it make you mm. nervous if you see artists consuming cannabis before they go on stage? Do you think it has an impact on their performance? Hundred percent. I mean, cannabis or any other substances. You know, like I've, I've, uh, you know, for for good or bad, I've been working in some of the, you know, uh, most toxic environments you can you can imagine, and you know, I've seen very artists, you know, really failing on their performance because of the substances they were, you know, they were consuming. Um, you know, not only cannabis, obviously, but, you know, like it does make me nervous. Absolutely. You know, uh, you're not performing at 100 percent of your capacity. You know, you might be creative. I think, you know, from my from my perspective, I think cannabis can be a great creative tool uh, that can make you think out of the box. It can help you promote, you know, what we call neuroplasticity in your brain. 
you know, kind of rewire your brain in a different way than you're used to. And obviously we know that we get so hardwired in our ways of thinking, you know, as we as we get older. Um, and, you know, any any of the substances can maybe potentially help us change the cables, you know, inside our brain for, for a period of time. And, and that can help us come up with creative ideas and with, you know, those eureka moments that we call. But, you know, that that is not a, you know, a good ally when you have to perform and, and deliver something at a certain time, you know, for, for a big crowd. I think it's a, it's a very risky game to play. Yeah, I mean, I, I, t I tend to agree. I think, I think, I think there also there are certain people. You know, there are certain people who can smoke cannabis all day and still function 100 percent, and there are certain people that just cannot function 100 um, percent. But there is a responsibility when you get on stage as an artist and you are delivering, you know, to people who are paid to see you. Um, and I think sometimes um, artists get lost in that. They get lost in the fact that uh, they have a job to deliver, and and it, it can have a negative impact. Not always, but it can. Just uh, before we get to the other, I just want to ask you one more question, Val. Um, from a studio mm. perspective, I know you've been in and out of studios and you've been in that space. Do you, do you think cannabis plays a, a good role there or a better role there than it is live? I think it depends on on the person, you know, again, and the metabolism of everyone. You know, like I, I personally don't perform on cannabis, you know, for example. I know that I'm a musician, but, you know, in any creative task, you know, I perform better on coffee, you know, and, and some people might laugh about it, but that's the, the truth. I think, you know, there's a lot of people that get to consume it also because of an influence of the media, um, you know, like Snoop Dogg, um, you know, is a famous and successful artist and he smokes cannabis, you know, like a lot of young kids are going to follow suit. But that doesn't necessarily mean that it has to work for everyone. I think everyone needs to listen to their own body, you know, and listen to their own, you know, feelings and go for, you know, whatever makes them feel right and makes them feel, you know, creative and, and you know, makes them, you know, achieve their goals. Um, I think there's a there's a risk to, to all of this. And sorry, maybe I'm, 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 I'm a bit of a bad cop in the room, but, um, you know, the, the, the risk in, you know, younger, younger crowds, you know, is that, you know, when you consume cannabis in a very intentional um, way, you know, when you know what you're doing, what you're doing, and you have also like a strong foundation mentally uh, around you, you know, and, and, and also the community you have around you, um, it makes it a much safer uh, action, you know, and, and, and it might not have any any harm or any, any downside, you know. When you consume it as a way of escape, like any other thing, you know, uh, when you are, you know, maybe jobless or, you know, you don't know what to do with your life or you are in a very poor environment and in very underserved com com uh, circumstances, you know, and, and you start using it as an escape, um, then it kind of, you know, make you end up in the wrong side of things. But that doesn't make the substance the responsible of that. You know, it's like it's, it's, like, it's a compound effect of many uh, circumstances. And I think in that environment, maybe cannabis might you know help you with creativity but maybe take away from your drive and your and your you know your perseverance and your you know um your push you know so again it depends you know on your social context on your you know on the task at hand on you know on all of those things and also your own metabolism i guess i think it's very important i mean there's a, a few things to take out here so you know it is, it's medically proven that you know using cannabis as a, under 18 even before you get into your sort of uh, early 20s uh, can have a negative impact on the development of your brain. Um, so there, there are studies to show that. So it is not advisable for sort of under 18s to use cannabis. And obviously, in the in the young creative space, cannabis is is, is very popular. So you know, they're, they're, and, and then there's also the the abuse of cannabis. You know, because um, while 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 having cannabis, you know, on a, on, a, on a on an infrequent basis or a few times a week can be hugely beneficial if you're waking and baking and smoking a joint from the minute you got out of bed to the minute you go to, 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 go to bed. Um, I personally don't think that is, is a good thing for anybody because you're continually in an altered state. So, and, and if you're doing that continuously over a period of time, I think that can be very negative. I think there are very few people that can actually survive in that space, um, although there are people that can. Um, and then, you know, so let's, let's talk about influence. Let's talk about the fact that artists have influence over people and uh, and, and there is a, a certain responsibility that comes with artists. I know there's two different camps here. There's the one camp um, that says I'm a creative, I would do what I want and I'm just going to be myself. And there's another camp that will be like, well, if I if I am a voice piece and people are listening to me, there's a responsibility that comes with that. Dave, do you, do you feel there's a responsibility as an artist uh, in terms of what you say? And I, mean, I know you're very outspoken in, in, a, in a number of things. 
Um, but and, and from that perspective, I, I, I perceive that you take that responsibility quite seriously because you 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 know what you're saying. It's not you know you you're, you're challenging uh, perspectives, you're challenging culture. Um, do you think that artists have a responsibility to play a role in, in, in society in that way? Only if it's something that you feel needs to be said. It's it's not something that's forced on you. It's, I, I almost feel like it's it's almost like a calling. Like you just get a gut feeling when you when you know you have to say something. It's it's often the things that are the hardest to say, that are the things that need to be heard the most. And uh, that's always my sort of guiding principle. When I when I want to say something and I know it's going to be difficult and I know there's going to be blowback, that's when I need to say it the most. I don't have a strong sort of a connection to to cannabis as as i'm sure someone like you might have where you want to advocate and you know fight for for rights and that kind of thing i don't have that feeling when it comes to cannabis so i might have the same feeling for other things but we need people like you trenton to actually you know be be these guys in in the sort of front line and and advocating for you know rights um but it's yeah, it's just different sort of playing fields and and different uh, areas. Uh, but yeah, I really appreciate where you're coming from, and and I love to hear what you have to say. And uh, I've I've certainly learned a lot over the years. You know, my bandmate Raven uh, speaks very highly of you. He he's a regular uh, smoker, and um, yeah, it's. I'm, I'm sure for you, it, it feels a bit like a calling, you know, to, to kind of advocate for, for, for the rights of uh, marijuana smokers. Yeah, I mean, I mean, cannabis has been part of my life since I was very young, which is not necessarily a good thing as, as, as I know now, research-wise. Um, but it's been a very important part of my life. And, and for many years, I had to keep it very quiet. I'm not a heavy user myself, you know, I probably once or twice a week. I go through stages where I don't use it for a while, and I've also gone through stages where I've used it, you know, continuously, you know, for, for, for two, three, four, five weeks, um, even two or three months. And th but during those patches, uh, I do reach a point where it's, it, it becomes negative. So I think it's all about understanding yourself. Um, just just going back to so, so thank you for that uh, input, Dave. Just going back, uh, Leander, to to your so you're obviously you you've grown up in a in a very liberalised way in terms of cannabis. So cannabis is just part of your 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 psyche, psyche your matrix. Do you do you feel that artists have a responsibility to make sure that if they are talking overtly about it, that they're aware of what cannabis is? You know, its pros and cons because it isn't. You know, yes, I am advocating for cannabis. Uh, I run a cannabis company, but I I'm also you know, like Valentino share the same sentiments that it's not for everybody. It's not to, it's not to be used all the time, and it's also just just compartmentalize it. Right now, we're talking about recreational cannabis. We obviously yeah. have um, you know CBD and, and the medicinal side of cannabis, which has a, a huge different impact. And that's a totally different conversation. But what what is your perspective on the responsibility that artists have in the space? Yeah, um, firstly, I believe that artists need to be authentic. Okay, artists to 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 connect with an audience, they need to, to, to be delivering a certain level of authenticity. Um, that's my personal opinion. Okay, whether, whether part of that authenticity in your music or in, your, in how you pro project yourself via social media, because these, these guys do live that lifestyle that they portray, you know what I mean? If you're, when you're on a certain level of artist. Um, uh, so so um, just taking it back, um, they must be authentic, yes. And artists, unfortunately, they, they do have a responsibility because of their influence. So within that authenticity as an artist, as, some, as someone who, who, who creates to connect with an uh, audience, um, uh, there comes that responsibility. And if part of you, of the way you want to be experienced includes marijuana or includes al alcohol or, or you're touched by a certain cause, for example, 
and it's a part of your life, whether whether it's, uh, it's it could be autism, or it could be or it could be um, a, a, a cause that is a part of your life. Um, that that's that's a, a part of your lifestyle. Um, um, whether 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 it's 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 your something you developed or something that you just, that's that's grown within you, um, um, and it's the artist's choice to 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 to, to introduce that to his three hundred and sixty communication or, or essence um, uh, when talking to the to 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 to, to his audience to the market. And, and also because of because of obviously the the, the level of influence, um, it does need to come with with uh, with responsibility, um, and uh, it's 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 down to the artist inevitably, I believe. But yeah. if, but but if marijuana is being brought into conversations in an irresponsible way, uh, peers and and industry um, fellows should call this guy out, as in like hold on, yeah, all due respect. To you and and your and your choice in, in, in being an advocate for marijuana, but do understand that you do have a responsibility, and by encouraging it to a seventeen uh, to, to to kids under the age of certain age or etc. or glamorizing it or over glamorizing X Y Z um, yeah. comes with repercussions, whether it's marijuana or other substances or crime in music these days. You know what I mean? Um, for example, or violence or gender-based violence. So you know what I mean? It, it's we need to be able to call each other out on 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 on, on what we say and, and what we do. Um, I know I kind of went there, there, there to get back like there, but um, artists do have a responsibility, um, uh, and we need the industry needs to call each other out. On I, I agree. Behavior. Yeah, I, I agree one hundred percent on that, and I, and I think in terms of especially where we're at, you know, in, in, the, in the state the world is in and the challenges that we have that have, that have been going on not even before the pandemic. Um, you know, the, the, the distrust in politicians and traditional leaders, people listen to artists, especially in South Africa. You know, they listen to, 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 to house artists, they listen to hip hop artists. Um, and, and in a country where, and, and in, a, in a world where we need more positivity, I think uh, I, I personally really, uh, encourage artists to be positive role models. Um, we're, we're running out of time, guys. So I just want to touch on sort of a, a last sort of segment. So, so cannabis and spirituality are often put into the same sort of mix. Um, you know, getting high to get higher from a spiritual perspective. Um, the same thing is happening with psychedelics at the moment. Um, but do you think that cannabis can help creative people get more in touch with their spirituality and through that, uh, create a more essence and create a variety in what they're delivering. Val, do you want to start with that? Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, yeah, well, absolutely. I do agree with that. I, and I do think that it, it definitely helps us go inward um, and get to know ourselves a little bit more. I mean, from, an, you know, again, going to to a neuronal level, right? It shuts down our prefrontal cortex, you know, basically that monkey mind that is, you know, uh, telling us what to do and what not to do and what to fear about every single second of our day, you know? So, you know, it helps us shut it down. It's kind of a, a little bit of a meditation in, in that sense, you know, on, on, on a brain level. And obviously that helps us, you know, quieten that noise and, and go deeper, you know, and, and, and reconnect with nature and reconnect with, you know, with ourselves and, and maybe even be more focused on, you know, maybe on the music that we are producing in studio. So in that sense, you know, I can see there is a, a clear benefit. Um, you know, again, it depends on how you consume it. But yeah, my opinion is yes, it does definitely help us on a spiritual level. Yeah. Dave, what's your opinion on that? Um, my opinion is that anything that is hard to do is going to make your life easier in the long run and anything that is easy now is going to make your life harder <laughs> in the long run so if, if you're smoking a j as some form of escapism you know you're dealing with troubles in your life and you you're wanting to reach nirvana it's not going to happen you, you're going to have to do the the hard work and i think it begins with diet uh sleep and Sunshine. I mean, basic things, you know, just getting exercise, eating well, sleeping well. Like, I, I really do think uh, depression and mental illness is very valid. 
But if you're not getting the right diet and sleep and exercise, you're not giving yourself a, a fighting chance. So if you can get those things right, and then from there, you know, reach a high level of spirituality through uh, marijuana, then I say go for it, you know. But I think okay, uh, a lot of using it as a patch. Yeah, I, I, I think a lot of people are, are looking for shortcuts and um, they might find it in the short term, but they it, it's going to hurt them in the long run. So, yeah, I, I think. Uh, Sorry, just to add to my, that. Uh, do, yeah, agree, do agree with you 100 percent. Eh? I, I wasn't I wasn't meaning to do it on a you know regular basis as a you know method to find spiritual growth right like i i totally agree with you you need to have the right foundations and and put the hard work you know this is kind of trying to become a monk without the meditation just you know taking substances and getting getting high i mean that's that's not going to be the, the sustainable way of living you know if you want to feel spiritually fulfilled um so yeah i totally agree with you 100 percent and I think we're still battling, you know, this 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 legacy. Even though it, it's sort of, you know, started off as sex, drugs, and rock and roll. It's like, you know, if you wanted to be credible, you had to get as fucked up as you could, you know, and 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 trash things as much as you could. There was this wildness that was accepted, you know, in the sort of eighties. Um, but I think times have changed. And I think it's very important that it's all about balance. You know, you you can you can you can consume marijuana, but you're eating terribly, you're not sleeping, you're not exercising, eventually that's going to start a compound and, and have an opposite effect. So I think, I think David, what you said is so, so imperative. And, and, and from, from an artist's perspective, a lot of artists don't realize that you have to be 360 with everything you do. If you, have, if you are creative, you still have to be disciplined. It doesn't mean because you're an artist you can wake up at 11, 12 every morning and do what you want. You know, some of the most disciplined artists or some of the most successful artists I know in South Africa are some of the most disciplined people. And they may, you know, they may, they may appear to be a bit loose on the front, but in the back end, they are super, super disciplined. Um, we're running out of time, so I just want to wrap it up. Leander, any further thoughts on you? Cannabis and music here to stay? Is it going to grow? Is it going to disappear? What, what do you think the future is for cannabis and music? It's here to stay. Um, it's going to evolve. It's going to evolve. Um, uh, that's it. It's, it's, it's cannabis and music. It's, it's the, the two peas in a pod. Um, um, and it ain't going nowhere. It's only going to grow and it's only going to evolve. But um, what it brings to people, it's, um, it's, yeah, it's up to the individual and their relationship, um, whether it's to, for creativity or to reach that level of spiritual nirvana, um, or whether it's to have that perceived constant third eye open. Um, and uh, yeah, you know, we haven't even touched on the, on the business side of, 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 of marijuana, you know what I mean, when it comes to, 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 to entertainment, you know what I mean, for example, um, uh, if we're talking artists, when it comes to endorsements of CBD products, um, uh, just kind of to, just throwing some, some topic, potential topics out there, you know what I mean, for future, you know what I mean, and just, yeah, my, it's marijuana, music, and entertainment industry, it, it's here to stay and it's going to grow, it's going to evolve. Cool. Thanks for that. Dave, final words? Hmm. Um, just thanks so much for having me. And it, it was a pleasure talking to such an interesting panel. You guys have been awesome. Cool. Thank you. Thanks for your input and insights. It was uh, great. You know, this wasn't always, it's not always about getting people who are heavy users and stoners all the time. It's about getting different perspectives. And, you know, we're in the music industry, whether you're a user or not, you're always surrounded by it. Um, uh, Val, thank you so much for your perseverance. I'm so glad we got you on for the last half hour. So thanks for pushing through. Um, final, final words from you on cannabis and music. What, what are your sort of parting shot? Yeah, I, I think it's gonna it's gonna stay, it's gonna evolve, it's gonna grow. Obviously, I mean that's a that's a no brainer. But I think it's gonna also evolve into a more healthy uh, way of consuming it. You know, I think we are too used to the smoking way of you know understanding cannabis, and I think you know there's eatables and there's a lot of other stuff, and you know there's also CBD alone. You know that might have other benefits uh, without the high, and you know this. I think science is just you know uh, making it grow so quickly these days. You know, and uh, I think. If it gets legalized, uh, fully legalized everywhere, and also you know we we remove all the stigmas that it, that it has, which will happen you know naturally as you know as the new generations come, 
you know, then I think it will grow naturally. And I think it's going to have a profound effect on our health level, on the creativity level, on, on, on many ways without the potential harms that it has if you, if you smoke it, for example, you know. So, yeah, I think it's going to be great. And thanks for having me and congratulations for the incredible community that you are you're building about your passion. Uh, once again, right. Thank you, man. <laughs> thanks. Great. Thanks, guys. I think the general take out from this is that firstly, cannabis is not for everybody. Secondly, you know, anything in moderation is a good thing, not necessarily if you overdo it, it's going to have a negative impact. Um, and then there's just everyone has a different opinion and tolerance is very important. And the cannabis can be consumed in different ways. It's not just about smoking. A lot of people don't want to smoke and are trying edibles. And as they grow and the scene grows, I think uh, we're going to see a very different experience that people have with cannabis. And I'm certainly hopeful on behalf of, you know, Chiba Africa and, and the people we work with that cannabis is going to be a positive thing for South Africa. It is a positive thing for the world. We desperately need a change of consciousness. You know, we're in the middle of a pandemic and I'm really, really hopeful that this has uh, made people take a step back and look at how they live their lives uh, and how we move forward. Because if we move forward in the way we are at the moment, uh, when Mother Nature finally gives us a clap, uh, it's going to be a lot worse than this pandemic has been. So I am hopeful that cannabis and other psychedelics and plant medicine can play a role in evolving the world into a, a place that is uh, more equitable, um, where people are you know, together. Uh, and cannabis has been one of the things that has brought communities together. So I embrace it fully and, uh, and hope that uh, people use it to, to help create community and build. So thank you so much. This is the last session of the uh, Crop Canvas Summit. Thanks to Druid's Garden and Grow on Africa for their support and all the other sponsors that have put uh, time and money and effort and all the people that are supporters for this. It's been an incredible journey and the industry has really, really got behind us. Uh, we run Chiba Africa, which also includes the Cannabis Academy. that is opening in Johannesburg in a few weeks. Uh, we have an open day tomorrow, so if you uh, still want to get down, you can sign up on our website. Uh, we have courses online, contact courses, and ultimately we're just trying to empower people to understand the benefits uh, health-wise, personally, and industry-wise uh, that uh, cannabis can have for our community. So thank you for joining us on the summit. Have a beautiful weekend, and we look forward to seeing you next time.